you're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your hosts, Steph and Kara, every Wednesday morning as they dive into a new witchy topic. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you're listening to episode number seven, Casting a Circle. Yay! Energetic circle casting can be a confusing topic because there are many different ways that it's done. And it's done in many different circumstances. Yes. It all depends on the practitioner and their type of practice. But we are going to do our best today, as we always do, to at least go over the basics and talk about casting circles from our own points of view. So... First up, what even is a circle? You might be wondering if you're a complete beginner. So a circle or a magic circle is an energetic space you create to work your rituals, ceremonies, or divination in. It's either an energetic circle or a ceremonial circle, which is often seen in Wicca-based practices, though they accomplish the same thing. So part of what I'm going to be talking about first is energetic circles. That's We've already talked about how I am not Wiccan, but Tara is. So she later can give you more insight into ceremonial circle casting. (laughs) So a circle is designed to do several things. Mainly, it's considered to be an energetic bubble that is acting as a protective sphere. Because when you're inside the bubble, you're protected from external energies interfering with your workings. It also, therefore, provides a shield, particularly when working with spirits or divination. So you're protected from any negative spirits. Another trait of the circle is that it's a space where the energy is contained. Now, we already talked about energy manipulation and how that can be very difficult for a beginner. So a circle can assist with keeping this energy contained until you're ready to set it with your intention and release it all at once. Because once you're able to release all of that energy at once, that will often result in a stronger magical response from the universe. So if you can't contain, if you're still a beginner, you can't completely contain it within yourself or direct it through your hands just yet and you like find it escaping if you create this magical circle it contains that energy for you it helps to do that yes so we should say that circle casting is not required in magic alone some religious ceremonies will require one but if you're not following a religious tradition it's not required if you don't find it necessary so some which is love to do it, do it every single time. And some absolutely will never cast a circle in their entire practice. So you have to do what works for you. And if what we're talking about today doesn't work, that's completely fine. Yes. You don't need it. Yes. If it's something you are interested in though, I can walk you through how on earth you would do it. <laughs> so energetic circle casting does not require any tools, but as you could imagine, energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next week, we will be diving into the topic of traditional witch tools, and some of those tools, like a wand, can help with circle casting. Yes. We will get to that next week because they're helpful but not required. So in order to cast this circle, you want to gather any objects you want to use within your divination or spell work that you're going to be doing. Because once you cast a circle, you're in this protective bubble. You don't want to leave. That's the whole point. So you don't want to have some tool or candle or something like that that you need that's across the room. You want everything around you. So try to get that all together before you start this. You want to sit or stand comfortably. And then as we talked about last week, you want to center, ground, and draw up the energy from the earth. Yes. You want to draw that energy into your hand or a tool, if you choose, like a wand, and cast it out into a circular shape around your body. And then again, up over your head and down your back and under your feet until you meet up at the point where you start it. So it's as if you were sitting or standing in the center of a snow globe. That's what you want to imagine. That's Or a bubble. I always do a bubble. Yes, or a bubble. So you just want to visualize this energetic bubble around you that you are protected in. That is what casting a circle is. And it's fine if you don't get this right away. It's the same as grounding and centering. It's something that comes with practice at working at. And you don't need to have a particular spell that you're trying to work on in order to cast a circle. If you just want to practice casting a circle, you can do that. Um, and like we said, not required, but if you want to, it's a tool that can be really helpful. Yes. So once um, you've finished your working, you also want to close the circle. That's very important to bring that energy back down. And to close the circle, you do the exact, those exact moves, but backwards. So draw that energy back around you, come back to that starting point, and then 
bring it back within yourself and push it back into the earth if you need to. And if that sounds confusing, that is what we have the last episode dedicated to is grounding and centering. You see how we went in order there? We did that for a reason. We did that for a reason. We thought about this. Stepped in. I just went along for the ride. But it makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) So once you've got this technique down, you don't actually have to use your hands or a wand. You can do it simply with your mind and visualization. But I find that for beginners, it helps to use your hand to kind of make that bubble and draw that space. Yeah. Um, So that is the kind of circle casting that I do. Um, On the Wicca side of things, there is a more ceremonial way to do it in which you um, can use salt water and you can um, face each of the four different, I was about to say five different directions. You could face each of the four different directions and ask the elements for help. Yes. Um, that's a more ceremonial way to do that, which I do not understand. So I will let Tara dive into Wiccan circle casting. So I, in my practice, I don't use much, I don't cast many circles except for religious ceremonies. So with removing um, specific religious ceremony circles, I'm going to just give a very broad overview on how I do it and how I find it helpful. Um, and going back to beginners, I highly recommend starting with a wand. Um, I found that very helpful as a beginner because you can see where you're directing the energy. And until you get good at visualizing and feeling the energy, I find that looking at it and seeing where I'm going is really good. Um, Going into the Wiccan way as well, if you are walking the circle and you start at the north and then you walk around to the east, south, west, and back to north in order to open or to uh, make your circle, it's really nice if you have a wand or salt water or something that you can visually see that you're making your circle. I find that uh, very, very helpful when I started. As you mentioned, there's a lot of religious aspects to making circles. Um, There's a lot of ceremonies involving circles. And there's so many ways to make a circle that I'm not going to try and describe all of them (laughs) because there's so many. When we go into specific religious practices, I might do that in a later episode. Uh, We can talk about how I make a circle for different ceremonies because I do use the technique in different ways depending on the holiday or the ritual work that I'm doing. So, Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that it would change. It does. Um, It can, I should say. Some people cast the circle the same way every time, and there's nothing wrong with that. I personally modify it based on what I'm working or what ceremony I'm doing. So it's just a matter of personal preference generally. Um, But one thing that I did want to point out, and you always, always, always want to uh, open the circle at the end and ground the energy. A really good description and why I always visualize the bubble is what happens when you pop a bubble without warning? It explodes outward. You don't want your energy exploding violently outward into the universe. I don't care what you're casting or what you're working on. That's not how you want to introduce that intention into the world. Uh, you really want it to be a lot gentler than that. <laughs> so um, That's a very good point. <laughs> I highly recommend practicing just casting the circle and then um, breaking it naturally, making sure that you're not like you said, getting all your tools in, getting ready, but practicing just casting a circle is very, I found it very, very useful when I was getting started just to practice directing my energy outside myself. And so um, visual representations are helpful. And sorry, this was more just casting the circle than religious aspects, but there are so many different um, ways that you can cast a circle. And if you're in a group setting, it's going to be completely different than if you do it um, as a solitary practitioner. So casting a circle is both very general and easy in theory and completely complex when you get to the details and how you're doing (laughs) it and why you're doing it. So yes, it can be very specific if you end up joining a coven Mm -hmm. um, that is Wiccan based, each one, it's going to be different between between groups. Um, Everyone's going to have their own way of doing it. Um, when I did work with a uh, coven, um, at one point, we not only all work, walked the circle, we all walked the circle with specific elements. So we actually circled four times and then we did a fifth time to close it with spirit. So it's 
I don't do that personally when I do it myself every time. Um, but as a group, it works really, really, really well. So it just depends on what working you're trying to do, the intention on what you're trying to do, and then your group setting or solitary setting as well. Because like you said, the most important thing is the energy direction, but you can do so many things to direct that energy. So that was a lot of information that may have been a little rambling. <laughs> No, I think it's a lot of good information. And I know it is kind of hard. You're just listening to us over a podcast, so it can be kind of hard to visualize exactly like these kind of motions and things that we're talking about. Um, so if you want to kind of see this in practice, um, and especially from a Wiccan perspective where you are using the directions and the elements, then we want to direct you to Harmony Nice on YouTube. She is a British YouTuber. Um, if you're into witchcraft, you probably already know her. She's absolutely adorable. Um, but she has a whole playlist called Enchan Enchanted Endeavors, and she talks a lot about Wiccan-based witchcraft. And she has a YouTube video dedicated slowly to casting a circle and watching her cast a circle with the Wiccan tradition in mind. So if you're having yeah. a hard time visualizing what kind of like we're talking, the movements we're kind of talking about here, um, I definitely wanted to direct you to that video. That will be very helpful for beginners. Yes. Like I said, to me personally, that's why I started using a wand at first because it was so much easier for me to visualize the energy being directed via a wand than myself directing it. Um, I no longer use a wand and haven't in years because I actually now find it a distraction. But when you're first getting started, the visualization really helps, I think. Yes, I agree. I think that is all I have this week for circle casting. Unless you have anything to add, Tara? I do not. I will say that everyone casts circles slightly differently in my experience. I know um, when I first got started, I cast a circle with a friend of mine and we literally bumped into each other. Like we could not figure out how to do it together. So <laughs> start focus on your own circle first before you try and incorporate other people. That's a good tip. <laughs> That's all I got. All right. Well, if you have any specific questions for us, please let us know by leaving us a voicemail. If you listen through to the end, it'll tell you how to do that. Um, or find us on Instagram at Which Wednesdays Podcast and leave us a comment and we can answer any questions there too. Certainly. That is all we have for you this week. We will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara. Love our content? Consider donating at anchor.fm slash witch-wednesdays to help keep our podcast up and running. Please leave us a voicemail on that same site if you have any questions or comments, and follow us on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.